Mr. Lemmy, thank you so much for joining us at ICD. My pleasure. Um, it was a wonderful lecture and there were very inspiring uh, thoughts you've shared with us. Thank you. Um, Mr. Javier Ideami is a Spanish artist, entrepreneur, engineer and founder of Ideami Studios. Uh, Mr. Javier Ideami has been emerging business creativity and technology for years. In addition to implementing educational innovation, pioneering workshops, conferences and events. Ideami has lectured at prestigious institutions including Stanford University in California, the headquarters of the UN body FAAO, the Faculty of Architecture of the University of Rome, the Canary Wharf Financial District of London and numerous other conferences throughout the world. Ideami Studios is diverse. Innovation, creativity, entrepreneurship, the engineering, software, design, photography, film, marketing, music, acting, and speaking, among others. Mr. Ideami, mm -hmm. what, what, what for you is the nature of the relationship between the creative arts and cultural diplomacy? Thank you, thank you, Julian, for the question. The relationship between the creative arts and cultural diplomacy, yeah, this is very connected to, to the talk that I just gave, you know. I, I feel that in, in cultural diplomacy, it's all about dealing with complex challenges, you know. So diplomacy is uh, really, the, it's about the interaction uh, between, you know, different countries, uh, different politicians. And these are very, very highly charged and very complex challenges, you know. And, and the arts, really, the arts, especially today, you know, the arts are really um, providing uh, a very important emphasis on, on finding that balance that I was speaking about in, in my talk between uh, analytical thinking and creative thinking. And we were talking before about Leonardo da Vinci. You know, Leonardo da Vinci understood this uh, from the very beginnings. He was actually very scientific. He was an artist, but he was very scientific. You know? uh, he, he did a lot of uh, research on, on you know, anatomy, uh, medicine, engineering. So he was a scientist, but of course, he, he's one of the top artists in history. So from the beginning, he understood that, that key balance between creative thinking and analytical thinking. You know? And that is the, the main relationship. This is, this is what art can, uh, can show um, the, the field of cultural diplomacy. You know? the, the importance of not facing these high complex challenges from just a very um, abstract, analytical uh, mental perspective, but to mix it with the uh, depth and the you know, intuitive uh, blending power of our creative thinking. I see. What impact can cultural diplomacy, cultural diplomatic activities within creative industries have on human relations, particularly regarding social divisions or, uh, as we've talked, uh, walls uh, that persist in society today? Actually, the blending of cultural diplomacy with art and with the work of artists, can, I think it can make it easier to approach uh, the challenges of social division. So when we have social division, sometimes if we approach communities that have issues with social division from a, from a very analytical perspective, it can be harder to engage, mm. to engage with them, you know. But if we actually blend that and we mix that with the contribution of uh, people that are very close to these communities, artists and creatives, um, that approach the very same problem and the very same social division from a, in some ways, deeper and more specific uh, angle. Uh, this can make it easier to engage with these social division problems and with the communities that we are dealing with. I see, yeah. but when you have founded um, Ideami Studios, yes. how aware were you of cultural diplomacy? Well, I was aware from the point of view of um, the contributions that uh, many cultural figures and many artists uh, have done to important uh, challenges and, and political and, and diplomacy challenges that are happening around the world, you know. And, and I, see, I see that important contribution of, uh, even from a creative studio, uh, merging with the actual social reality and with the political reality and with the cultural reality of the communities that surround us. We, we've been doing that. And, yeah. Okay. But what benefits mm. does the practice of cultural di diplomacy bring to your organization specifically? Uh, the benefits of the work that uh, cultural diplomacy is making is that it allows us to connect in easier ways with other communities and other, other cultural um, groups with whom we can work 
uh, with our um, workshops and with our films and with our productions, you know. And another thing that is important, you know, at TDM Studios, we make these uh, workshops for businesses and companies and political organizations in which we help them balance their thinking, their analytical thinking with creative thinking. Mm. And cultural diplomacy actually uh, is, in a way, it facilitates as well our work and our access to different organizations to help them balance their, their thinking in this way. I see. But thinking back to the starts of yeah. uh, Idami Studios, yes. would you have acted differently if you would have been aware of, of its merits um, sooner? I mean, it's a good question. I think the more I became aware of, of the impact of cultural diplomacy, um, had I been more aware of this at the beginning, certainly I would have um, uh, maybe, you know, intensified the approach in, in a different in different directions. So yes, you know it's you know the more I have become aware of the impact of cultural diplomacy uh, in the world and in so many communities, the more I have felt eager to involve our multidisciplinary work with it. Yeah. I see. This weekend marks the 25th anniversary of yes. the fall of the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. To what extent did uh, different art forms help to influence a positive attitude shift on a society of division? Yeah, so I think this is, uh, this is a great question, Julian, and uh, this, is, this, is, this is one of my passions, actually, you know, to see, you know, I'm very involved with groups that organize, uh, of course, exhibitions uh, that are very related to social movements, you know, yeah. and, and to social, uh, the social scene in different capitals and cities around the world. Um, and I have seen in the last, yeah, in the last 10, 20, 25 years, uh, I can see how the movements that artists, sometimes the artists in different capitals and cities begin movements that are very small at the beginning. Uh, they start in very local communities within the cities, but gradually they start to spread within the cities until their impact really, really ends up reaching uh, the high levels of uh, government in the cities. And, and we can see that actually when something as dramatic happens as the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, these artist movements really come to the foreground and we actually see in the liberation of these movements, we actually see the spontaneous expression of people, even people who are not artists, actually taking the stand and blending with artists and expressing themselves in a very creative way, just naturally. So I would say that actually in the, you know, the, the artistic expressiveness of each of us in relation to uh, to social movements and to social divisions and, and to these freeing movements is, is something that actually uh, is activated spontaneously many times by these processes that sometimes are started in very local ways and then they, they grow. Yeah. Right. Well, well, in this context, how, affecting, how yeah. effective is then uh, art as a form of soft power in a sense? Yeah, that's a great question, Julian. It's, it's, I would say it's very effective and it is becoming more effective. You know, when we think, for example, of the top companies in the world, mm. like Apple, for example, and Google and many others, we will see that uh, even companies that have nothing to do with art and creativity are involving more and more uh, design and aesthetics uh, because they are realizing that people around the world, they are very responsive. Uh, they respond emotionally and therefore uh, at the core level, at, at every level, uh, to art and to creativity and to the impact of art and creativity. So it is, it is a soft power that is growing, okay. it's growing. The impact of, of art uh, in fields like technology and, and politics and culture is just, it's just spreading a soft power. Mr. Idiame, with your multi-dimensional background yes. in your speech, your key term was art fusion. Yeah, engagement it, and art fusion, yeah. Is yeah. art fusion the utmost example of cultural diplomacy? As a multidisciplinary artist, I'm passionate about the fusion of different forms of art with technology and everything else. And in cultural diplomacy, we are uh, passionate about the, the fusion and the connection between different communities and cultures and, and countries. So there is a fantastic connection there, right? And, uh, and I'm very passionate about uh, blending cultural diplomacy with art and, and have this fusion process that in my experience all my life, it's really, it accelerates and it enriches every individual part of the process, both in the different forms of art and in, in the different uh, parts that compose the cultural diplomacy process. Well, that was a great answer. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking your time to come here and lecture for us and answering these questions. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's been a pleasure. Look forward to have you again here. Thank you.